Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Game of Thrones. Today we're going to be doing my episode 3 review. I'm so excited. This episode was absolutely brilliant. It was so action-packed, and it really kind of just blew my mind. So if you do go on to enjoy this Game of Thrones video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, but also subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any Game of Thrones videos as we head towards the end of this season. So we've only got a few more episodes left. But I'm going to be covering it every week, so I'm so excited to talk about this. Alright, so this is the most anticipated episode probably of the season, obviously bar the finale, but episode 3, The Battle of Winterfell, is upon us, and wow, what an episode. This was absolutely action-packed to the brim, this had so many twists and turns that I did not expect, we were all expecting deaths, I think some people died that I definitely didn't think we were going to die, but then people who I thought were going to die did actually die. But also I felt like a lot of the characters I thought maybe would die didn't die as well, so lots of different twists and turns. But anyway, let's break this down, talk about it. So the opening 15 minutes were amazing. Extremely quiet and tension filled. The star actually was such a good build up to the massive ongoing fights that literally went on for like the next 50 minutes in such a perfect way because it was just that slow sort of tension we see all the different characters we go around with the different armies who's leading like Brienne leading with Jaime in one section then we have obviously the others like in the background we have Sansa and Arya looking over and then you have Grey Worm and his army the Dothraki and everyone just sort of sitting there waiting for the Night King and his army to come and they don't come the Dothraki go after them and this is when Melisandre actually returns and she's able to light the flames of the Dothraki soldiers they get basically super pumped up and excited I guess in a weird way but they start charging and you see them go into the darkness and one by one in the background they don't focus on it but in the background you see the lights go off and you can obviously infer from that what's happening right there and it was just such a great way to start the episode and when the battles actually first happened it was so impactful because of that opening and literally the overhauling of the dead they are literally spilling over the characters it's absolutely nuts and it's super intense Alright, so let's move on. So, this episode was over an hour long. I think this is maybe the longest episode of the season. Obviously, we have to account for the credits, which are literally like 10 minutes or so long. So, obviously, subtract a bit. But, yeah, really, really amazing at how they actually sort of timed and structured this episode because it did not drag at all. It was probably one of the best episodes of TV I've ever watched, honestly, like live action TV. Amazing, one of the best Game of Thrones episodes for sure. And so every character was near death at some point in this episode. You felt for every character. You were like, no, please don't kill him. Please don't kill her. And it really did a good job at focusing on these different characters. But the main focus in this episode was John, Arya, and Bran nearer towards the end of the episode. But I really, really did like that we saw all these different things that was happening. So John and Daenerys are together. They're flying the dragons and they are fighting the Night King and Viserion, that was such an epic scene, we'll talk about that in a sec, but you see the focus on Jon getting back into the Winterfell after he falls off the dragon, and he has to actually get past all the newly dead, undead soldiers, and you see Arya at parts in this episode, we have one of the best scenes of the episode when she's in the library and she's got all the dead surrounding her she has to sort of sneak around and it's really really intense and tension filled and you see these different points but Arya is probably the most vital character in this episode and wow what a payoff we'll talk about that in a sec so John and Danny, as I said earlier they're working together you see at the start of the episode they're sort of looking on the battle and Obviously, it was kind of strange not seeing John right at the front because John's normally the hero who leads the army, like in the Battle of the Bastards and everything like that. So it was kind of strange, but it was so awesome seeing them on the dragons together. So that was a new way to start a battle with Jon Snow, and I thought it was just very fitting that he was there with Daenerys flying around. 
Okay, so let's move on to the next bit. So the Dothrakis are basically all dead. That was kind of shocking how quickly they all went because as you know in past battles, they've been super powerful. They've been a great help and they got wiped the shit out. So I believe a few of them retreated, but that's about it. There's barely any left. So that was kind of shocking. Did not expect that. That was one of the twists I wasn't expecting, but that really showed the power of the undead and how many of them there truly were. And so, we get a whole load of big moments in this episode, so, like I said, Melisandre returns, she has that moment with the flames, and her prophecies all come back from Season 3 to Arya, and it all ties in, and it's very poetic in how she talked about the blue eyes, and we'll talk about the end of the episode in a second, but there was some great moments like that, but also visually, and the way the episode was directed was just outstanding. Those scenes with the dragons in the sky and the clouds and the light and the way the light hit the clouds, honestly, some of the best television I've ever seen. Like, so well done. I love the visuals, the cinematography was excellent, and yeah, just especially those wide angle shots. Alright, so let's move on to talk about the next bit. So Bran has one of the best moments in the episode. It's when he's walking using the ravens and you see this amazing POV shot of the Night King and him sort of reaching out and it shows obviously his connection to Bran and we'll talk about the connection in a minute. But that shot was like the Night King actually reaching out to you as a spectator and it was really actually kind of scary and... It was definitely one of my favourite shots in the episode, but in regards to their connection and what was going on in the episode and what they teased with the stare down at the end, there is some sort of connection. Obviously they've been walking each other and connecting for quite a long time now, but you know, with them finally meeting, it was so sinister and really, really kind of creepy and I think there's perhaps a greater meaning behind it, but I'm not sure yet. But we have major deaths in this episode, this is what everyone wants to talk about, and so we'll talk about the hero's deaths first. Alright, so Ed dies at the start, I think that's pretty early on in the episode, he's helping Samuel Tarly, who is obviously getting just destroyed throughout the whole episode because he's not a very great fighter, and so he dies, I was expecting him to die, so that wasn't very shocking, but it was sad to see because I do like him, and one of the most sad deaths, but one of the most poetic deaths was Theon. So, Theon, I, obviously we all have a hit and miss relationship with him because, you know, he betrayed the Starks and took over Winterfell many seasons ago. Then he's good, then he's bad, then he has the Ramsay Bolton thing, we're like, oh, I feel really bad for him. And then we start to like him again. He comes back to Winterfell last episode and they were so setting him up to die and I called it last night. Wasn't so shocking but the way they did it was so impactful with the Night King stabbing him as he saves Bran and defends the tree and then he gets stabbed by the Night King and it was very shocking to me and yeah I'm gonna miss him but little bear what a way to die but I was like no what the fuck are you doing like how don't go out just stay in the crypts because you know, she is so small, she, I love her, she's so cute, so powerful, and so sort of just courageous, but the way she died was very courageous, but it was such a like, oh, why the hell are you doing this moment? But yeah, she takes out this giant, and yeah, it was a great moment, and she comes back to life, which is just even scarier. And Beric also dies in this episode as he saves Arya. You sort of knew that once he threw the sword to save Arya and Melisandre returns and you see that she explains this was his destiny. And that's why the Lord of Light brought him back so that he could actually save Arya. That was the whole prophecy. So all of these prophecies with Arya and Melisandre are actually coming back to fruition that Arya was supposed to be the one to stop the Night King and we'll talk about that in just a sec. Ser Jorah dies. This was the one death that was like, no. I was literally in my seat like, no, oh, please don't do this. Because Jorah is one of my favorite characters. I know he's like not the most popular, but I love him. I've loved him since the very start in season one. Even when he betrayed Daenerys, I've always loved his character. I think he's so intriguing and so loyal that at the point when he died and he was taking all those hits for Daenerys, I was like, no, 
why? <laughs> but it was very fitting that he died serving his queen. Alright, now the bit we've all been waiting for. The Night King smiles and he survives the blast by Daenerys' dragon and what the hell was that? That was an amazing moment. He never shows emotion but he was smirking. You saw that and I was shivering. That was absolutely scary to the hell. But anyway, so Jon doesn't really kill anyone. He doesn't even get to fight the Night King. He's nearly at the point where he's fighting the Night King and there's an unexpected twist as Arya kills the Night King. Sort of like this trick shot kill where she jumps up, he holds him in the air, you think the Night King's about to kill Arya, she drops the dagger, she picks it up with the other hand, bang, he disintegrates, he shatters, and that is the end of the Night King and his army. They all shatter and they've defeated the dead by episode 3. Was not expecting that at all. That was such a great moment. I love the way that he actually died. It was very poetic. I find a lot of these deaths to be very poetic. They definitely have planned this out extremely well and it's been executed excellently. But I'm a little bit unsure as to why they killed them off so early. I, I think the death scene was absolutely amazing. I thought this episode was the best episode, you know, in a very long time. But I'm a little bit unsure as to how this rest of the season is going to play out. Obviously, Cersei is going to be the main villain, but I'm a little bit annoyed they didn't drag it out a bit longer with the Night King. But that death scene was so amazing and so fitting. So I'm not sure how it's going to go on properly past this. Obviously, they're all going to team up and they're going to go down south, go to King's Landing, have some massive battles, defeat Cersei, and now we're into the real Game of Thrones, as the title says. And it's going to be, you know, whether Jon or Daenerys is going to take the throne from Cersei. Are they going to kill Cersei or not? So, yeah, what an episode. Was not expecting that ending. The ending was great. And, you know, the, the fights, the battles, what an amazing episode. This was really, really great. So, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.